Bay Area 415 apparently got doxxed in a very not like it's not like a dox sort of dox dox hacker way like people just like went through his reddit history where he basically said all of his personal information in there and in, in his fucking prime genius he apparently thought that it would be a great idea to like start a channel where he hides his voice and face while still using the same reddit account that he's used for two years where he's basically given given out personal information for free very bad obsec there buddy i i can't really take you seriously after that so he got doxxed, people found out his real name, they found out that he works at like a big law firm that he does um, foreclosures. So he basically evicts people from their own homes on, on behalf of banks. He immediately like um, shut down everything the second this happened. His channel's gone, his Twitter's gone, he's just out of there. And it's like, man, does he think he's legitimately at risk? It makes me really fucking lie. He, like... Something must have happened with his work or something, because the guy was, before this, he was going fucking incredibly hard, trying to get a job at CGT, and he was literally begging the Chinese government to give him a job. But now it's just like, oh, now they know who I am, we gotta shut this all down. Like, seriously? Dude, nothing's gonna happen to you, you're a fucking LARPing moron who puts on a fucking balaclava with a voice modulator, nothing bad was gonna happen to you. He's like, oh, I got death threats. Dude, I get death threats. I laugh at them. That you get a death threat. Is it bad? Yeah. It's bad, and the person who does it is a piece of shit. But no, it doesn't mean that something's going to happen to you. Like, the, the idea of doxing as, like, some sort of thing with massive, terrible consequences is incredibly overblown. If you're getting doxed, so to speak, right, for people who it's, like, legitimately scary to get doxed, like, people who are fighting fucking Nazis and stuff, like, Nazi hunters, people legitimately, like, doing real revolutionary shit who are, like, targets. It's not, it's not fucking random China YouTube, but there's plenty of pro-China YouTubers who show their face whose names are public. 25k subscriber YouTuber Bay Area is not in any real danger because his name has been, his name is out there, man. Give me a fucking break. Nothing's gonna happen. You know, no one fucking cares. If anything, you're actually carving out a great niche to make a ton of money for yourself. I mean, do I think he should have been doxxed? No, obviously not. The thing is, do I think it's really impactful that he was doxxed? No, I also don't think so. It's like saying, I don't think that this guy should have been punched in the face, but he's not gonna have any long term effects from being punched in the face. Okay? Same idea. It's just hilarious to me that he immediately shuts everything down. Just everything immediately. Shut it all down! It just shows that he really values his corporate lawyer job more than he does the, the, com the comrade activism that he was doing. Nothing's gonna fucking happen to him. At least dozens of people out there, many of them who are more popular than him, who say the same things, putting their face to their words, and absolutely nothing happens to them. Like, they want to spread this narrative of McCarthyism in the USA, but the entire reason why his channel was even allowed to be there on a mainstream platform like YouTube without being taken down is because he's not a threat. He's not a threat even remotely. They want to believe that there's some sort of, like, revolutionary movement making videos about how China's capitalism is great and epic on YouTube, as if that's a fucking threat to the US state, man. Anyway, that's the, the Bay Area doxing take.